Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of First Samuel. You remember the story of First Samuel, how uh, Samuel was born to Hannah, and he, after the death of Eli, becomes the judge over Israel. And uh, this particular story uh, takes place when Samuel is old. We don't read a whole lot about the intervening years. We read about Samuel's birth in chapter 2, and we, by the time we're in chapter 8, it says here that Samuel is old, that his sons don't follow the Lord, and they're, uh, they're corrupt, and, uh, and they struggle. And so the people come to Samuel, and they say, give us a king. This is in verse 5 of 1 Samuel 8. And it says, uh, they said to him, these are the elders of Israel, Behold, you are old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint for us a king to judge us. And here's the key phrase. Like all the nations. There is something within the hearts of men, not just in our day, and not just in the time of Samuel, but it's just something that is pervasive in the hearts of men that we want to be like everybody else. And so as a result, we conform to this world, to borrow Paul's phrase, and we need to recognize that the stains of this world get on us. Now, this particular idea of providing a king for Israel was disagreeable to Samuel. He didn't want that particular thing to happen. But the people didn't know what else to do because normally in that particular day, there would be a succession within the family. The sons of the father then would take over that particular role and, and Samuel's sons were corrupt. So what was going to happen to the nation? And so in some ways it seemed the right thing to do. But what oftentimes happens is that there is a way that seems right to a man, Proverbs says, but the end thereof is the way of death. And Samuel understood that this was going to be a problem for the people long term. That's why he was a prophet. But, but God gave in to the request of these people, and they did have a king. And of course, the first king was Saul, who was one of those corrupt officials. He was apparently a very good administrator because he built the, uh, the nation of Israel uh, soundly. But he was not necessarily a godly man. And so the, his successor was David, and we know the stories after that. But the point here in this particular passage is that these people wanted, be to, wanted a king so that they could be just like the other nations. And very often that's what happens with us. We, uh, we remember those days when we, were, uh, when we were developing, when we were young, and all we wanted was just to blend in and to be like everybody else. Uh, hopefully we've outgrown that, but maybe sometimes instead of outgrowing that particular spirit, we simply outgrow the childish parts of that. But we still don't want to stand away from and apart from the world around us. The Apostle Peter will later call us a peculiar people, but yet we don't want to be peculiar to the world. We want to blend in. I stop and think about the people that God used down through the years for his glory. People like Elijah, and he was, he was a wild kind of uh, looking kind of man. John the Baptist was similar to that. Amos the prophet was someone similar to that. Yes, God used some that did blend in, but he used some of these that were, that were peculiar, that were odd-looking to the world around us. You can meditate on the uh, prophet Jonah sometime and imagine how he must have looked after spending three days and nights in the belly of the fish as he went into the city of Nineveh. God uses peculiar people. And that's why when he brings us through conversion to himself, he tells us 
don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And of course, that's what we are trying to do as we read through the scripture each day and each week and each year. We are transforming our minds so that we don't blend into the world around us. Jesus was um, in the upper room and he, um, and he was washing the disciples' feet and Peter protested. He says, no, Lord, don't wash my feet. And Jesus told him, unless I wash your feet, you will not be clean. He, he says, otherwise you are clean, but your feet get stained with the dust and the mire and the dirt of this particular world. And that's an illustration of what happens for you and me who are, uh, who are in this world. We're to be in this world, but not of this world. We are not to be like everyone else. We're to be peculiar, different, standing firmly for him. Father, help us to be those people who stand for you in the midst of an ungodly generation. Help us to not disdain the, uh, the, the, uh, the nickname that we are Christians. Help us not to disdain the, uh, the name of Jesus, not to be embarrassed or ashamed, but grant to us the grace to serve you faithfully and truly before a watching world. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day now.